Hi, today we're going to talk about tables and how you can use them to display your data on your website. So, how I like to put it is that we really used to consider tables as being this evil kind of idea because people weren't using tables for the reason they were supposed to. Instead, they were using tables to kind of set things out, laying them out nicely on the screen. This started to happen back when, during the time of HTML2, maybe HTML3.1, and people said, I really want my page to look nice, and I don't have a means to do it, so I'm going to make it a huge table and kind of lay everything out in different rows or columns. This completely throws out the whole idea of separation of content from layout. In addition, it makes it really confusing for people who might be using assistive devices because they're wondering, is this really all a bunch of data, or is there content that could, should just be kind of formatted in the regular way. So we're going to start talking about tables, and what I really want to do is stress the idea that you should only be using tables if you have some sort of data being uh, displayed. Now, before you even start coding a single thing, I need you to sketch out your layout of what your table should look like. Now, I've told my students this over and over again, and they say, yes, yes, and then they start to code, and then they say, yes, yes, and then they start to code. And after about the fourth or fifth time, they realize, oh, it's a lot easier to write clean code the first time than to fix broken code. And so then they begin and they think, all right, how many rows and columns do I actually need to represent all of my data? And then you go a step further and say, well, are there any rows or columns where I actually need to span multiple cells, or what we call the little boxes of the table? Because if so, it's going to be a lot easier if I've drawn this out to figure out where I'm going to need in special attributes to make that happen. Because one of the most important things to know when you're doing tables is that the browser is expecting there to be the same number of cells on every single row. If you don't do that, it's going to look very messy. Once you've decided what your table should look like, then it's time to start thinking about the tags. You start off with the table tag, and it's basically just a container element that's going to hold all the other attributes in, or all the other tags inside of it. You're going to have the table row. And then here for TD, I have columns. But what I really think would be best is to think of this as table cells, not really columns. Because what you're doing is you're talking about each individual box. So inside the table, you're going to have one or more table rows. And then inside each table row, you're going to have one or more uh, TD elements, so the columns or the cells. So here's the code for creating a very simple table. Although it looks very convoluted and like there's a lot of things going on here, most of this is just information for the browser. When we look at the actual page that's generated, you'll see that it's very clean and simple. So I have my code for my table on the outside, and then each one of my lines of code here is one row. I have my TR start and my TR end. And then inside each row, I have three elements, one, two, three, which are inside the TD tag. And I'm going to tell you right now that when I initially wrote this code, it looked fine, but I'd kind of messed it up because I had forgotten to put in my ending tags. So make sure when you're coding these that you're being very clean and very concise. And if you do it correctly, this will create a simple table, as I said, with nine elements in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is as simple as you can get as far as a table goes. Now, in some cases, you might want to add what we call table headings to your code. Table headings is the idea that at the top of each column or even at the top of the start of each row, you have some sort of text that's bold that indicates this isn't data. This is actually the name of the data that we're looking at. Now, it's fine. I mean, it's not fine. It's what some people would do is they would just make these regular TD elements and then perhaps make them bold. So the people who are looking at it can say, oh, hey, look, this is bold, so it must be more important. But we really want to avoid doing that. Instead of using a TD with some sort of bold font, we want to use the semantic tag TH, which stands for table heading. So here, these three lines of code are exactly the same as before, but I've added one new row where instead of TD, I have TH. So I have row one, row two, row three, et cetera. And what you can see here is that what we get is this nice little table heading at the top of each one that is both visually lets the user know that these are headings, but also semantically conveys that same information. So one of the things I mentioned earlier when you're designing your table is you want to decide if you're going to be spanning multiple cells. It might be the case that the table you want to make isn't some sort of perfect tic-tac-toe grid or perfect 9 by 9. So you can combine multiple rows and or multiple columns using the row span and column span attributes. Inside your element, you would include row span equals 2 if you wanted to span two rows, or column span equals 5 if you wanted to have it span five columns. 
All right, so let me go ahead and show you an example with some code. And again, I realize, especially if you're looking at this on some tiny little screen, that this seems really like a lot of information to digest in. But it's not really that much going on. I have a simple table where I have my table headings with the child's name and then the parent's name. And then I go ahead and I start putting in a child. And with each child, I include their parents. So here, I have row span equals 2 for Catherine, which means I actually want my Catherine cell to take up two lines. Same with the Edward cell. Maggie, I've left completely alone. So let's go ahead and just look at the end result. And I think that's really, if we backward chain, it's going to help you understand what this code is doing. So again, I have the child's name, the parent's name. And here are the two cells where I did the row span. And you can see it actually took up multiple rows, because in this case, Catherine and Edward both had two parents that we wanted to put it together with. Again, not a hard concept, but it is the case that if you weren't thinking about it, and we went back to your code and just started throwing row span and column span in, it just gets very messy and, and harder to debug. One of the things you might have noticed, at the very top of the table, I included a border attribute. The reason I did that is because I think it's much easier to see this row span here, because I have the lines around each cell. So you can use the border attribute to go ahead and put lines in between each one of your cells. And it's very common to do that. But again, in your HTML, I try to avoid styling. It's something we can add later if you decide to learn more about CSS. But it's an attribute that's so commonly used, I wanted to go ahead and put it in there so you could see what was going on. Next, let's talk about captions. So how do we link text to a specific table? What people used to do is they would put in some sort of heading, H2 or H3, and they would put it right above or right below the table. Um, so visually, if you were looking at it, you could kind of figure out, oh, this goes with the table. But again, I really want to push you to use semantic tags. So instead of doing that, you can go ahead and use the caption um, tag inside the table, and it'll help everyone know that, oh, this caption goes with this specific table. So let's go ahead and review. Number one, table should only be used for tabular data. Don't use it for layout. Two, draw your table before you code your table. It's going to save you so much heartache in the end. I promise you that. Finally, and this is the third and most important thing I hope you leave with, is that you need to check for unclosed tags. One of the things that's great about browsers when you're kind of developing, developing locally, you're typing your code and you're testing it and looking at it, is that your browser can usually figure out what you meant to do, even if you messed up. All right? And tables are a good example where you can forget to close some tags, but your browser kind of knows what you meant to do. But later, if you decide to make a table and you're going to upload it, and you really need to make sure that the data in there is valid and represented well, one of the worst things you can do is leave your tags unclosed. So make sure you validate your code whenever you write a table, or really whenever you write any code, and you'll really be able to be sure that you're writing the best code that you can.